Okay, I'm at Best Buy. I'm about to buy two Apple products. I've never done this before. I've never owned any kind of MacBook, any Apple computer before, so that'll be interesting. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit expensive, but maybe after the 30 days, I'll find that it'll be worth that money. I highly doubt that. I have my reservations. I've been an Android slash Microsoft guy for a long time. Making this switch, I'm sure, will not be easy, but uh, at least I get products that look good, right? Okay, just purchased. These three things will go through it soon, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty penny, I will say. Okay, so I came out spending a bit more than I thought I was gonna spend going in. Um, I guess that's a consequence of going in store. But I have the goodies, but once again, more than I thought I would buy. So I have the MacBook, it's the M3 processor. It's the newest edition, the 2016 edition. I bought an Apple Sport Watch in the space gray color or whatever their, that equivalent is because it's not exactly space gray. And then I also bought an iPhone SE. So that's the basically the 6S internals but with the smaller form factor mainly because it was cheaper and I didn't want to spend more than two grand. Speaking of which, I almost spent that. I spent about $2,000 on all of that. So, uh, and I also bought one of these, which is a USB Type-C to USB 3.1 thumb drive, which I definitely need considering the MacBook only comes with one, uh, I guess, external port, and that's a USB Type-C port. So, yeah, I'm already starting to feel the buyer's remorse set in just a little bit. I don't know, I guess, I, I guess I'll, I'll be able to assess how I truly feel about these things once I open them all up and start playing around with them. So I guess that's the next part of the video. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, after, well, a few hours of getting everything situated, I used to have an Apple account with my iPhone 5S that I had before I purchased my Note 4, so I, I synced all that up. Now when I get an iMessage notification, or any, any message notification for that matter, it all goes to here as well, and it goes to my new Apple Watch. So, yeah, these were the three things that I purchased. Um, they're all synced up. I, I wanted to get all that set up before I started filming so it looked like I kind of knew what I was doing. Uh, but there are a few things that I do notice right off the bat that I do absolutely love about this thing, and that's what I want to share with you guys in this first little vloggy style video here. So first off right away, yes, everyone for the most part knows this. We're looking at a USB Type-C port here on the left, and well, that's it. So first off, this thing has a USB Type-C port on one side, obviously. And then the other side right here, boom, USB 3.1. So uh, yeah, 32 gigs of it is only like 17 bucks, so it's better than nothing. And uh, this will allow me to transfer files from my desktop to uh, to my MacBook, which is great. Um, so that this is kind of a must-have. This is like the bare minimum I would recommend. There are like docks you can plug in here that kind of just add expandable uh, storage ports here, USB 3.0, uh, HDMI even, things like that, that you can add here on the left side, because that is it, folks. That's all you get, is that one tiny little port over there in the corner. And uh, not too many things, at least currently, are using that. So that's something that you have to consider when you purchase something like this. The other side, obviously nothing but a single headphone jack. This is already really weird. I'm just, I, I'm not used to this. Like the, the whole operating system is just so, so different. Um, I, I don't, I've never owned a MacBook. I've never used OS X for longer than like an hour. Um, and so yeah, I'm having to learn how to navigate, how to do everything. Um, now this I am familiar with. I am familiar with my iPhones. Um, I've used iPhones in the past. Now this is the SE, so we're looking at iPhone 6S specs. Uh, this is the A9 chip, all the goodies, 64-bit architecture, of course, uh, but in the iPhone 5S form factor, which I, I actually like. I like the smaller, kind of more compact phones, much different than my Galaxy Note 4, which is somewhere, somewhere behind me. And again, like I've got the matching space gray with the space gray, and at the same time, the Apple Watch is, it's almost a matching color. It's slightly darker than the, uh, than the actual one. Well, no, it's actually in the light. It actually is a little lighter. So yeah, I kind of got all three matching here. Space gray, that's my favorite color, space gray, and the, uh, in these MacBooks and iPhones and all that good stuff. So yeah, I like the color coordination. Looks like I kind of know what I'm doing. So first off, I want to address how beautiful this screen is. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm in love with Retina displays. I love the IPS technology uh, in, in like insane viewing angles. I mean, there's like no, look at that. 
you're not getting into that weird color distortion, the, you know, the lights turn to darks and all that good stuff. So that's the lovely thing about interplane switching screen technology. Uh, on top of that, you get great uh, brightness. So right now we have it maxed out. You see if we turn it down to half brightness here, it's still definitely doable. I used to use this all the time. This is a membrane keyboard, so it has a kind of a kind of a mushy feeling to it, uh, but it, it is very responsive. There is plenty of key travel, so you know when you're engaging the key anyway. That's, that's something that's important for me. And over here we have a mechanical keyboard. This one's from Aki. My review of this keyboard is right, right there. Uh, but this is a mechanical keyboard. These are ch uh, blue switches, and they feel completely different than the other two that I just showed you. So I have three different keyboard experiences here, and I can say without a shadow of a doubt that this is the greatest feeling of all three. I mean, really the only difference is the key travel, obviously. You're not gonna have very much key travel at all on these very thin laptops. Uh, so I think these butterfly switches here, so it's kind of a, like a picture of cross pattern. When you push the top of the key, they kind of just fold in like that. That's essentially what's going on inside each of these key switches. So I am still trying to figure out this whole operating system deal. I know that this down here is where I can find pretty much everything, uh, so that's good. I, I kind of can relate this to the Windows experience. It's really weird having to go to the top left to exit and maximize Windows and whatnot, not the top right like I'm used to on Windows. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I'm willing to make some compromises for the sake of, well, extreme portability for one. This laptop is super portable, super slim, 12 inch screen. I mean, really, th this laptop is so thin when I do it like, when I move it to here, the camera thinks I'm trying to trying to focus on stuff behind it. Uh, I can't even get it to, to be detected by the center autofocus here. Uh, but this laptop is very, very thin, something I was looking for in a laptop. I was tied between this and a Dell XPS 13. I know a lot of people who use Microsoft, who love Windows, would have told me that uh, an XPS 13 would have been a better choice. But this is, this is just something different. I wanted to change things up. That's why I purchased this. I don't have buyer's remorse, not like I thought I would after spending roughly $2,000 on all three of these things. I just really like how they're all coordinated. So this, this is literally almost tied to this in every way. Um, and then my, my watch is tied to my phone via Bluetooth. So really everything is just just coordinated so beautifully. And that's, that's the, a perk of going with one company, one manufacturer for all of your devices. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing is that Geekbench 4 takes a lot longer than Geekbench 3 does to finish. And I say that because, well, I don't really know how long this should take, but on my editing rig, we're looking at uh, two minutes and 20 seconds. It's gonna be around two minutes and 30, 35 seconds by the time this finishes. So that's considerably longer than what Geekbench 3 uh, required to finish its test, around maybe 50, 55 seconds with a Core i7-6700K. So uh, here we go, I guess we're gonna get some live results here. Single core. Okay, these are definitely different scores than what, than what Geekbench 3 is pushing out. So, 2346 and 4663. Uh, obviously, nowhere close uh, to what the i7 is pushing out. Um, but, I will say this, uh, for a laptop that's using a Core M3, which is only a dual-core, hyper-threaded, like 0.9 gigahertz CPU, uh, that's really, it's really not too shabby. I do have something that will actually allow me to edit video clips uh, that's gonna be a lot better experience than my Lenovo 100S was, no, but most of my editing, again, will remain on uh, my custom PC here. So, yeah, you're seeing kind of a comparison here. Obviously, the single core of this chip is better than the, <laughs> the actual multi-core score of the M3 here on the MacBook 2016. But hey, what can I say? So we'll be able to see how I, how I, how I'm able to handle, I guess, applications uh, with the MacBook. I am an engineering major, um, so we're, you know, I'm, I'm in the core of my of my uh, degree right now. I'm a senior, so I'm taking a lot of classes that require heavy programs. We'll see if this thing can can handle any of that, or if I have to do it all on my desktop. And uh, obviously, iPhone. I really, I don't really expect too many problems with that. This is sporting the 12 megapixel camera. And uh, that's, yeah, the A9 chip. <laughs> I don't really care much more about it than that. Uh, and then the Apple Watch, that's just something that I, I kind of just picked up on the spot. I said, well, I'm going Apple here and here, so I might as well just get the full package. I will say one thing, the MacBook speakers in here are absolutely crystal clear. I, I did not, I didn't, I really didn't expect uh, to have such good speakers in such a slim device. So uh, that's another plus for this. Just, just other things that I keep discovering about these devices that, uh, that I really, 
uh, really enjoy that's, I guess, taking away from that buyer's remorse that I otherwise would have experienced. Speaking of which, if you think that I should experience buyer's remorse, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Obviously, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this because I did switch entirely from Windows to this and from Android as well to uh, Apple OS X and iOS. Uh, just let me know what you think about the transition. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for the other vlogs. We'll be posting multiple vlogs over the course of the next 30 days, and then we'll have the final verdict 30 days from now. And I guess I'll make up my mind whether or not I'm going to keep these or just sell them off. I'm not going to be returning these products, so I, it's all spent. It's going to be spent. I'm not returning them. So this is just, I'm either going to eat the cost or I'm going to enjoy the products at the end of the 30 day period. But anyway, folks, be sure to give this video a like. If you thought it was cool, give it a dislike. If you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button. If you haven't already, stay tuned for well, more of these vlogs and some more tech-related stuff. I have a good one regarding CPUs coming up tomorrow. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us and bearing with me.